You ever have a girl tell you, let's make a movie? Ah. You ever have a girl be like, I want you to play the knight in shining armor for me? Now that I'm in my hot guy phase, I'm really happy with all the new gigs I'm getting. Turns out working on your fitness really does things for you. Thank you. And listen, I'm down to do things for my friends. What she doesn't realize is that I hate Game of Thrones, but I'm down. I think people underestimate my willingness to help them creatively. I think there's enough success in the world for everybody. A lot of people with skills and talent don't like to help other people because they see them as being in competition with them someday. I don't see it like that. So 1,000 years ago, I made this video called uh, I Wanna Be a Genius Billionaire Playboy Philanthropist. And now I'm trying to enter my philanthropy era. At first I thought it was kind of lame and having a huge lack of creativity to do these like philanthropy videos, but this new generation thinks it's cool. So, you know, I'm in my comeback era. So that's what I'm gonna start doing now is my philanthropy era. Cause I want people to respect me. And it's actually really easy to help other people. So you might as well do it. She keeps explaining to me all these fantasies she's having, but I'm like, look, all we need is a green screen, a CGI dragon and a couple of castle scenes. <coughs> Mm -hmm. Is your flashlight on? If you've been watching me for a while, you probably know that I hate Game of Thrones. From my bit that I used to do, I think somebody actually uploaded a compilation of all my Game of Thrones ramblings. I hope you guys know I was being serious. I really have always thought Game of Thrones is dumb. Thrones, Thrones, Game of Thrones. Pleasure to have we need Will. to know what Will thinks. We need to know what Will thinks, so come on in, Will. Well, Tell us what you thought well, of this baby. episode. Uh, you know, guys... <laughs> I don't know about this one. What happened? I wasn't completely impressed. Now, oh. Jon Snow, first of all, his first monologue, he started off in a monologue. Why would they cut to straight into a monologue? He said in this monologue, Khaleesi, you were always the one. I never thought anyone was the one but you. And she didn't even respond with any, with any love. No. I literally never watched it until Steve begged me when the last episode was coming over, coming out. He was like, please, Will, please uh, watch it. I have everybody coming over. Just watch it for the first time. And I watched the last episode of Game of Thrones, and I was like, I don't know, y'all. I think I was right after all these years. That was bad. And then everybody was telling me, no, this is, this is strangely bad. And I was like, oh. I guess I was right. I'm also interested in doing this because one of my favorite Family Guy bits is Black Game of Thrones. We now return to Game of Thrones on BET. I got a big ass coat, chair to sit in, chowder's cup of wine, and a midget. But I ain't going out there with all them monsters out there. I mean, I also kind of just don't like fairy tale setting in general. I know, I know. I know people are like, uh, that's wild for me to admit it. But the reason why I like Star Trek and stuff, because Star Trek is like somewhere I want to be. To tell you the truth, I don't want to be in Lord of the Rings. I feel like it's stank. I feel like very few parts of Star Trek smell bad. And then there's something like, you know, uh, female Vulcans have a higher sense of smell than the males. So they like literally take injections. So their smelling decreases when they're around stanky ass humans and Klingons. So like, you know, there's always something to do. There's not much you could do in a fairy tale setting. So that's why I was interested in taking on this job. So do the same thing, just vibing. I think the hardest part of this is definitely gonna be the dragon. Don't get me wrong, I got a dragon. And look, I'm not a 3D modeler by any means. I'm a 3D animator, so I can animate this dragon. We can get some animations off of Mixamo. Sometimes the dragons already come with animations. So beforehand, I watched some documentaries about the team who made the dragons for Game of Thrones, what their inspiration was, and how they did it. Yeah, I can't do none of that. Scales of a lizard, the wings of a bat, and the neck of a T-Rex, all to create this. I thought it was funny that his wife was like, oh, don't show me what you're working on because I don't want to get spoiled for the show. Built that gigantic thing in this little tiny bedroom. This is Dan Ketcher, the self-proclaimed father of dragons, and he's the man responsible for designing these iconic creatures for one of the biggest shows in television history. Don't he have an NDA? He's just showing everybody what he's doing? 
early drawing of Drogon, but it's not just about sketching. Catcher creates detailed models that he sends to HBO for approval. I don't know why I thought it would be easy to make her flying on this dragon. And I had like a fan off to the side so it would like blow her hair and it just wasn't doing nothing. So now I know for those scenes where their hair is going crazy, it's a giant fan. Not my fan that's been on for five years. Oh yeah. Can you see this? No, this, this phone is like doing shit. It's bugging, I forgot. I broke it even more, leaving it in my backpack. Does she even ride the dragon in Game of Thrones? These are the parts that make it hard when you don't actually watch the show. I th I'm pretty sure she rode the dragon at least once. How? How? Did you guys know I'm a CG artist? You probably didn't. I've spent hundreds of hours of my life teaching myself how to make CGI. Back in 2021, before AI was AIing, I thought in order to help my film career, I should become the VFX artist. So I did it. Every single day, at first just an hour a day, then sometimes two hours, three hours, pushing myself to learn as much as I can about CGI. Little did I know that three years later, this new thing, Sora, would exist. Have you seen it? The new AI video image generator. I think the best comparison that everybody's talking about from the Marquise Brownlee video is a year ago when Will Smith eating spaghetti is what we thought AI video image generators were gonna look like compared to this now. What this is gonna be like in a year from now, two years from now, three years from now. Me personally, I hate it. Why does AI do all the fun stuff? Why is AI taking all the jobs that made life worth living? Who was it like Alana that tweeted that? Don't AI know how to clean the ocean or something? Somebody get boy on slat on this. How come he ain't doing no AI? Like, do I think it would be cool for one day to be like able to type in into a prompt, make an episode of 90s Star Trek featuring Captain Sisko and Seven of Nine when Captain Sisko gets trapped in the Gamma Quadrant through a wormhole? and you know, use a Jeffrey Coombs villain, and then I have to go somewhere for like 10 minutes and you come back and it has like a, a, a 40 minute episode for you. That sounds awesome, but also terrible at the same time. So if you wanna learn how to do CG, first do the Blender Guru donut tutorial, then you'll figure out the buttons, then move on to more advanced tutorials, and then bam, you're doing it. Watch some Ian Hubert videos. Make a plane. This will be our road. Make a new material with an image texture. Use a road. Hit U, unwrap, and line it up so it looks nice in the UV editor. UVs are your friend. Now model the rest of the freeway overpass. This should be easy because it's just rectangles. But don't forget your edge loops. Select all your new geometry and apply a new material. My favorite tutorial channels are Alfie, who does like the Iron Man stuff, and Media Way, who does all this car stuff. So she's asking me to create a princess bedroom in CG. Easy. All you gotta do is, you know, Model a room, put a window in it, put some textures on the walls, put some stuff in there, bam. Do your thing, Vicky. So Vicky is one of those women who are like, I, I saw a term for it recently, like extremely feminine. I forget what the, the term is, but you know, girls who like pink and love pink for the rest of their lives. Uh, so that's the inspiration for this fantasy princess bedroom. When I was making it, I kept calling it Renaissance. Some of it is Renaissance, some of it is Game of Thrones. So first, Vicky created a couple of outfits online for her character to have. I like them. One of them, this one, no. But these two, this dress specifically, this is giving me Renaissance. And then she wants to do her hot girl lingery stuff. Okay, cool. No clothes on when I'm with you. She was tugging on my beard, man. Like, why is this a part of it? So she kept saying that I wasn't smiling in character and I had to explain to her that I can't smile because when I smile people start laughing. I don't think it goes with the character. This character is serious. He has to kill orange walkers. I told her to come up with some choreography. This is what she did. I think my knight in shining armor name is uh, Lord William, House of Darthros, Slayer of Gowron, something like that. I I I'll figure it out. I just became able to grow this beard. Don't pull him out. So in the end, I was unable to make a movie in 24 hours because I got stuck at the orange walkers part. 
Turns out, since I don't know how to 3D model, I can't make orange walkers because that's something I made up. There's not already a 3D model for it. So if anybody that watches me knows how to do 3D CGI and you can help make me some orange walkers, please hit me up. So what do you guys think? Should we make Black Game of Thrones a real movie or TV show idea? Let me know in the comments below. Accurate. I'm not going out there. I'm realizing that a lot of people have a version of themselves in their head that isn't really who they are in real life. Like a lot of people say, oh, I could easily do this or I could easily do that. Well, if you never really try, can you really say that? What I mean is if you always let the fear inside of you control you, you ain't slaying no dragons. You're staying in Hobbiton or whatever town that Hobbit was from that he didn't want to leave until the wizard made him leave. I ask you to embrace your inner warrior. Fight fearlessly, fight for yourself. My grandmother used to always tell me to pursue an education, to follow my dreams, and not to do it for her, to do it for myself. I ask you to embrace your inner warrior. Be the change you wish to see in the world. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. Watch this other video I did about something really important.